Thanks for joining everybody. Just a couple more minutes. We're we're waiting on our, our special guest. And then we'll get started. Have any questions during um, the presentation, please feel free to enter your, your questions in the chat um, or the Q&A, and we'll be sure to get to those at the end. Oh, there he is. Hi, Jason. Hey. Hi, Jason. <laughs> Keeping us in suspense. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> good stuff good stuff yeah. all right i think we can get going awesome yeah, yeah let's kick it off um thank you everybody for joining we appreciate it so much i'm um, really excited to be here today and my name is adriana i'm the account manager at graphical networks um jason sherman here is is with us as well he's our um director of customer support um and of course jason hilty as well he um is here with us from Notre Dame. Um, and we are so, so excited you are here. We really appreciate it. Um, and would you mind just introducing yourself? You are on mute. How about now? There we You're go. Good. Oh, hey. one of those days. My apologies. Uh, yeah, so uh, Jason Hilty, I, I hold the RCDD here at Notre Dame. Um, like many of us, I wear a lot of hats, uh, primarily project engineering and Wi-Fi design and really the uh, technology implementation across uh, new construction renovation type work and uh, mostly the administration of the fiber optic plant. Wonderful. Thank you. Well, we really do appreciate you being here. My pleasure. And um, so for today, um, our agenda, we're just going to do a quick overview of um, Net Terrain, um, talk a little bit about who we are. And of course, we will have our live discussion with Jason Hilty. Um, and then we will do um, a, a live demonstration and show Jason Hilty's project as well um, and do some questions and answers. So please feel free to put your, your questions in the chat or the Q&A, um, kind of just a brief overview. But we this is something different for us. Usually we don't do this type of webinar, but this is um, something new and exciting. So we're excited to jump in. Um, Jason Hilty has been using NetTrain for, for five years now. So we right. appreciate it. And Jason, I'll over to you. Yeah. Yeah, so to get started, uh, just a quick introduction as far as, you know, what is sort of net terrain outside the plant. Uh, if you give me one second, I'm going to share my uh, my other screen here. So hopefully you guys still see the slides and all that good stuff. Um, so net terrain is for network documentation. It's sort of purpose built for that whole um for that ability and give you that capability. Um, as you can see here, university campus, Jason will show us his project a bit, but what we allow you to do with our net terrain software is document things like your buildings, your hierarchies, floor plans, rooms, if you want to, racks and so on, but primarily with outside plant, we're talking about things like uh, conduits and fiber cables and strands and being able to do uh you know splice cases and other things you don't have to do all those things it's more you know certain capabilities are there so if you do have certain criteria requirements that you're trying to follow and do you can certainly do those things uh, graphical networks as a whole company uh we've been uh around for uh quite a number of years now well over i don't know i think 15 20 uh, i don't know the exact number <laughs> i sort of lost track honestly um but this is this is kind of our thing you know we we uh do network documentation uh for really for organizations big and small right so it might be um you might be a small organization maybe you just have a few uh small fiber runs that you need to document that's fine 
uh, or you might have, you know, more of a larger sort of footprint of what you're trying to document as well. And that's fine too. Uh, so, um, you know, we, we try and keep the tool where it can be used by a lot of different organizations, not just a one. And I'm sorry, hopefully you guys can see the uh, slides again. Um, I sort of, uh, I think when I shared my screen, it kind of got rid of the slides. So you're good. Um, but but Jason's here to talk about uh, sort of his project a bit and also for us to ask questions of Jason. And you guys can do that, too. I'm going to start off with some questions, some sort of, I guess, somewhat obvious questions. Uh, but, you know, you guys might have a few things you want to ping him with, too, and feel free to throw that in the chat. We'd love to hear from you. So. So first and foremost, Jason, if you could kind of fill us in a little bit on, um, you know, why did you need to document your fiber infrastructure? I mean, what was sort of the point of of doing that? You know, when this when this started five or six years ago, what what kind of drove you to look for a, a tool? I guess. Yeah, so I, I hired on to the university in 2015 and uh, did a lot of the, uh, the fiber patching. And I, I found that we didn't really have any of that documented. We had a, a PDF layout that just kind of showed the strand count between buildings, but it really didn't supply any information as to like what's used, uh, who's on the strands, where the strands are even located in the building. It, it was rather high level and generic. So uh, being the kind of the sole person at the time that was making a lot of the fiber patches, handling the troubleshooting, uh, I spent most of my day running around building to building trying to figure out uh, what was where, uh, which became uh, pretty tiring uh, pretty quickly. Uh, so, you know, pitch it to my boss and we decided, yeah, we need to have a, a formal documentation of the fiber optic plant because not only are we constantly patching and repatching, but we're constantly growing here. Um, so it's quickly going to get out of hands if we didn't kind of tackle that sooner than later. Makes sense. And um... So it sounds like, I mean, were you using something before Net Terrain? Did you guys have any any kind of documentation or just really nothing? We had no doc, not even spreadsheets. Okay. <laughs> uh, again, we had one PDF that just showed the connection building to building and uh, it wasn't even that accurate. So I mean, really, it, it was all up here. As gotcha. far as documentation, yeah. Yeah, that yeah, makes sense, makes sense. Uh, so um, moving on sort of in uh, with some of the questions, uh, if you hadn't selected, let's say, net terrain outside plant, uh, what would have been the alternative? And, and maybe I shouldn't just say net terrain outside plant if you hadn't selected something, um, a software product. Did you have other things in mind of what to use or to do? Or you, I'll let you talk to that experience. Yeah, the few um, that we kind of played around with some demos on, I remember uh, on site, uh, OSP, I believe, was what it was called. I uh, didn't quite play like I wanted it to. Um, it wasn't necessarily bad, but it wasn't what I had in mind and there wasn't yeah. a lot else available. Um, we we did have some internal discussion as to a, a internal build of some software, but we just didn't have the resources or the time to tackle uh, quite a complicated project really. Uh, so uh, Net Terrain kind of came along right at the right time and certainly had all the options I wanted and it's a uh, found it to be pretty versatile and uh, I fell in love with it right away, really. Yeah, I can't remember because I know it's been a while since you initially, you know, started looking at your software and then looking at NetTerrain. Did you do a sort of a trial for a while with the software? We did a brief trial, yeah. Yeah, and, yeah. and I was uh, immediately happy with it. Well, that's good to hear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. So uh, moving on. Um, so one of the things we kind of run into, certainly when we talk with folks about net terrain, whether it's for outside plan or DCIM or whatever, you know, there's always the question of getting stuff into net terrain. For outside plan, it usually is a little more difficult um, because of the amount of data and the fiber strands and all that that good stuff. So how did you guys approach that? You guys do it site surveys, you know, what does that look like for someone who needs to tackle a project like this? Mm -hmm. and, and this is going to be a, an answer that's going to differ from, uh, you know, organization to organization uh, based on, you know, we, we kind of got together internally and decided, you know, what is it that we need to document? Um, what, what was pertinent to our department? Um, so, you know, the, the 
other groups might find things different than what we chose, but you know, to get together, decide what you want. And we did have to do a full audit. Um, I kind of started it myself just to kind of get my foot in the water and see how it was going to go. But we did have to contract that work out. Um, Notre Dame's not a large physically campus, uh, thank goodness. So that was to our benefit, but we do have a large strained account. So it was it was time consuming. You know, it does take some resources, whether it's internal or external. It's it's and it depends on how much documentation you have to begin with. Again, we're starting from scratch. I'm sure a lot of other organizations uh, probably have some good spreadsheets or might even have some other form of documentation they could start with. Right. Yeah, and and in your environment, because you mentioned this strand counts and other things, are there's, is there sort of a typical strand count for your cables? Do you guys do a lot of more home run type strands end to end, or do you do a lot of splicing and that that sort of thing? We we don't do a lot of splicing. We didn't in the past. We do a little more now. Um, it was a lot of building to building, uh, a lot of 48, 72, 144 strands. Uh, we, we just redid uh, several years back our uh, sports venues for the ACC ESPN network. Um, we fed that with a 1728 ribbon fiber and broke off 288s and 144s from that. So it's really a combination of just about everything under the sun. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, some important obvious, uh network stuff for sure um, to keep track of. Um, so, you know, one of the things, you know, people look into documenting and like, you know, we want to document our network, but, you know, the only reason you want to document your network is if if it's going to do something for you, obviously. There's some, there's some result. There's something that's going to help you with in some way, because otherwise, why, you know, why do it? So in your case, having done the documentation and doing documentation right now um how does it help you guys you know what what are the uh well efficiencies or whatever it is that that helps your team now with having documentation yeah in our case it's largely efficiency driven uh, we didn't really contract out the patching and that type of work um so we're not necessarily saving the money on it but the the time spent at the desk doing other things rather than running around is is massively better than it was. Uh, and this is an efficiency across a, a number of our positions here from the network engineers to our field team, uh, to our telephony team, to our design team. Everyone can resource uh, this information um, uh, rather easily and quickly rather than uh, stepping foot outside the building to gather that information. So it's uh, again, efficiency was what we were going for, and it's uh, certainly done that. Oh, that's good. It's good to hear. Um, how many, um, and just a separate sort of note, um, are you the primary user? Are you the primary editor? Do you have other people that, that refer to the documentation too, that log in and that kind of thing? Like, what's that kind of look like in the environment? Our current setup is I, I run it as admin. Um, I do have an editor who helps keep up with our uh, building floor plans because we document our as built and our floor plans in the software as well. So as things renovate, as things get built, um, she helps us keep that up. I have a couple uh, technician user groups. And then I've, I've got some read only as well. So we've been, it's four or five real different users to it. Gotcha. Yeah, that's good. Um, and uh, as far as the maps, you know, with 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 outside plant with net terrain, we do integrate with open street maps. We integrate with the with Google, which is pretty common stuff. But mm -hmm. I think in your case, you guys use your own maps, right? Yeah, and the the maps you provide, are, they were great. The reason we went with our own map is because uh, we don't have anything above ground. Our utilities are all in tunnels. And it was really ideal to have that documented as well. So we just, it, you know, we do document that. So we have that background PDF file available. Uh, I just found it so much easier to have that information rather than using the, the in-house maps that you provide. Gotcha. Yeah, I, would, I mean, obviously I've seen them and I'll be driving your, I think, demo here a little bit for you. Um, so yeah, I have seen that, and that makes sense too. I do hear that a bit because a lot of folks do have sort of a map that they already have with sort of things laid out on it. What they need is to be able to interact with it, have you know links, 
mapped out that they can click on and see data and information about it. So, right. you know, they need you need more sort of more information and data, and that's you know certainly net terrain. And you know, obviously, there's other tools out there too you can investigate for outside plant. But those are the types of things they should be able to do for you, give you some flexibility, the ability to track data and those those types of things. But um, so sort of the last set of questions before we kind of look at your project a little bit. Um, advice, you know, for for kind of getting started and looking and just the whole thing. Yeah, the biggest set of advice uh, really would be to get together with your internal team and just discuss what the expectations are from the different stakeholders involved, because someone might have a different expectation of what you're going to document than what you, you know, someone else might have a pretty good idea of like, hey, you know, might want to document your loss on each strand as well. And, you know, so definitely talk with the team, see what everyone wants. Um, the software is very flexible. There's, it's very easy to customize the fields that you want to document on. Um, so as long as everyone's on the same page, uh, moving forward from there is really rather easy. Yeah, that's good to know. And I, I hear similar things and, and based on our experiences, yeah, it's good to have others involved, but also, um, you know, if you have a specific need and, you know, whether to involve other groups, I guess, becomes the uh, tricky part because then you do have other sets of requirements that might come into play that uh, could take the process a bit longer. So, yeah, good. Yeah, good information. And we can also that drive that discussion too is, you know, who your user groups are going to be as well yeah. um, because you you may want to provide certain information available to others. You know, it's, it's again, every organization is going to be different, uh, but it's worth having those discussions. That'll, that'll take the project a long way. Yeah, for sure. Um, so moving on, I think what we'll get to now is show a little bit of your project. That's all right. Mm -hmm. I'm going to yeah, share. Uh, let me go over to my uh, window here and get this on the screen. So this is a, so you guys should see this on your screens now. So everybody does. Uh, this is the uh, UND campus. Um, this is the top level. I'll let you kind of talk about what we're seeing here, at least at the high level, and then I'll zoom in a little bit. Yeah, at the high level. So I, I do have uh, different types of fiber documented, both multi-mode and single mode right here. Largely, it's just the single mode links. Uh, the pathways you see are, are underground pathways and utility tunnels, which is why we wanted to have a uh, in-house map rather than a uh, provided one. Uh, it just pretty much shows the physical pathway that each building connects to, and underneath that is the the utility layer. Gotcha. Um, and if I click on um, if I click on one of these mm -hmm. uh, links on the left hand side, we see like what you said. It'll tell you the type. In this case, single mode kind of tells you yeah. the from and the to and some other information, right? Exactly. And, you know, again, those are uh, fully customizable fields. That was the information that we felt we wanted to see uh, just to know building to building length, uh, the strand count total, uh, the owner. You know, sometimes we have uh, other organizations, you know, Comcast will have their own fiber. So we also wanted to break down who owns that strand. Right. And of course, um, it's not just uh, the links that are on here, these links are attached to endpoints. And what are you typically, in your case, kind of terminating to? So we largely terminate in, into Leviton enclosures, uh, mostly the six and four RU as a standard. Uh, you know, of course, there's a, a smattering of all kinds of different things across campus, but largely we use just standard Leviton enclosures. Terminate SC. Uh, try and keep it pretty straightforward. Our, our older part of the plants, a lot of ST connections. Um, but uh, pretty straightforward. We, right. Again, we don't do a lot of splicing, so it's just really connector to connector. And those enclosures are typically in a building. I can see some of the buildings around the campus here. You can click around and see um, some of those different buildings. I think there's a particular building we're going to go into, and we can see some of those Leviton uh, sort of connection points. What was that building? Coleman Morris would be a good example. <laughs> And so just so everybody knows, on the left-hand side, you do have a hierarchy. You can navigate and browse directly in net terrain, but also in the map itself, you can go in and, and uh, sort of drill down and double-click 
um, as well. So when you are looking for things, there's search capabilities and other things too uh, that you could get into. And I'm sorry, what was that building you mentioned? <laughs> Coleman Morris. Coleman, I went too far, didn't I? There it is. So I'm going to click on Coleman Morse, navigate down, just W. So what are we seeing here? Yeah, so as you can see, uh, we also use this to document our floor plans. Uh, some of the buildings we use the actual as builds that show our drop locations and uh, drop labeling because we want our technicians to reference this in the field. Uh, we don't have that information on this building so much, but you can just see that I was able to use a floor plan for reference. You can click on the MDF, which will drill down into the actual room. Yeah, so on the left, you'll see it tells you sort of the rack name and that's the MDF. So if we double click, it'll drop us down into this view. Yeah. And this is just the rack layout. You know, uh, once we got going, this wasn't an intentional item at the beginning but as uh, i got further into documentation i just realized how much easier it was going to be to, to really populate the racks outside of the fiber optic enclosures you know i can show where our switches are where our pdus are where our routers are uh, again just for reference at your desktop instead of having to go oh do we have rack right. space to add x y and z gotcha. um, so you know i can you know any one of those e f g h you can open any of those up and it, it's our standard enclosure. Yep. So here it's standard 6RU Leviton enclosure shows the, the 12 port panels that we have installed. Um, I've got it set up. Green is an available port or red is something that's active. So you can see uh, from your desktop how full the patching is. Uh, when you click gotcha. on the port information, you know, we brought up what's the label? Where's the other side of that? What building does that take you to? Is it single mode? Is it multi mode? Is it is it an ST connection, an SC connection? Um, there, there's a lot of information. You see, I have DB loss reflectance. There's a number of things that I would document when I have the information that I would put in there that you can use. You know, was it if it was tested last year and you saw, you know, you're looking at. Right negative 1.5 but now you've got a failure well obviously something's changed you know what's changed and send it someone damaged something uh, so there's a lot of good information there to reference yeah for sure <laughs> are these clickable can you drive through and see the other side the connections no i don't have it set up like that uh, the one thing we do have on the port though is that clr information which gives us the full fiber link which which i found very useful and you get to that how um, I typically right click to end then to view and then view CLR. And then what yeah. that'll do, it'll take that port and show you every connection point along the link, uh, which is, that's the type of thing I would spend most of my day hunting down if I had to troubleshoot something. But now I right. know it it tackles all those buildings, all those enclosures and all those ports, uh, you know, at the click of a button. Right, and you can see at the top, it goes through the library, through the hall, and then to Coleman Morse, and the different equipment in each location and each uh, rack, basically, as well. Yeah. Uh, which is great. Uh, mm -hmm. It's good. Absolutely is. Yeah, it's interesting looking at this, because I always like to see other uh, people's projects and how they approach. I mean, net terrain's pretty flexible. Um, you know, the way you are kind of using the tool might be different than somebody else. Like, you have right. multiple what we call containers in one cabinet, mm -hmm. where I have other users that do sing single container cabinets or double container cabinets and, you know, that kind of thing. So they might show multiple cabinets, but there's no, there's ne not necessarily a right or a wrong here. It's about, you know, what makes sense for your environment. And I think, exactly. you know, it's it's nice that you can uh, sort of do those types of things in the tool. So yeah. anyway, Largely well, our goal was visual. You know, we just wanted a visual representation with as much information as we can get and you know some people might not be as much on the visual they might be looking at uh, a lot of that metadata on a, on a strand or you know like you said do we double click on important and show the the link on the back side you know someone might want that information gotcha yeah, yeah. no this is great and uh, again thanks thanks for your time for sure for kind of showing this if you have anything you want to add yeah, feel pleasure. free Otherwise, I wanted to see if anybody had any questions out there uh, for Jason. Um, certainly. Um, oh, and I should mention too, there's a case study we did with Jason too. That's on the website. I think it's in our chat right now. 
Um, you can find that on the graphicalnetworks.com website uh, as well. It talks about some of the things we talked about here um, in that case study. So that's that's very nice to be able to kind of uh, visit and kind of check out. So um, thank you but, for sharing your project, Jason. I really appreciate yeah. it. Um, oh, my pleasure. I, I have a quick question. Really do too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, if you have one, what is your favorite net train feature? I really enjoy that. Uh, link information, the CLR option. Yeah, uh, I find that very useful. Uh, but, awesome. but honestly, I, I love documentation. So I mean, just the 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 fact that I get to document our racks like this and have it be web based for everybody in our organization to reach. Um, you know, that's that's a huge plus as well. Sure. Yeah, I, I think um, I think successful projects like network documentation projects, I think they have to be driven by folks that w one have a vested interest in the documentation, right? That want to do the documentation, that understand the sort of the reasoning behind it and why it's important. Um, you know, I see projects where they kind of approach it from the standpoint it's just a burden, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. and I find that those projects usually aren't really going to be too successful typically. I mean, you, you got to have good processes and procedures in place too which which okay. remind which actually begs a question too do you guys like how do you keep things up to date is it mainly that your couple of people you have that are just know what changes are happening and you guys put it in yeah you know it, it did take some uh retraining of a, of a number of folks i mean you, you had to make everybody aware of like this is this is the effort that we are putting into this and it's going to take one person doing something outside of the norm to really make it. I mean, I can keep it 90% accurate, but, you know, in my opinion, 90% is made, you know, still isn't accurate. So, you know, it just takes one person to go off and do their own thing. Uh, so right. yeah, you, you do have to have those internal conversations of like this, this is what we're doing. This is the procedure. A lot of these places, you know, other customers might have that already installed in their people. You know, we, we have a, a very set way of doing things. And uh, we were, we were pretty open <laughs> that people yeah. kind of went their own way for the longest time. So yeah, we we did have to have those conversations of, you know, if you're going to patch, let's let's send that to the technicians to do, and they'll document it. Yeah, which is very important to keep your documentation up to date because you obviously put a lot of time and effort on the front end of this in right. order to keep it effective. Because I do find that you know projects also will fail because if they don't keep documentation up to date, people stop trusting the documentation. Then they're just like. I'm not going to use that anymore because I know right. it's not accurate, right? Exactly. And you know, and that could even be just a couple percent inaccurate where people stop using it. So it's important to keep it up to date. There were some questions online I want to bring up. Uh, one is is cloud based and the cost. Um, so cloud based, we do offer cloud solution. Uh, so you can do uh, net train in the cloud, SaaS cloud, hosted cloud. You can also do on prem as well. So if you want to host it yourself, you can certainly do that. We are a Windows platform though. So keep that in mind. You need Windows Server and SQL Server as the backend database. Costs will vary uh, based on object counts and what we call editor user counts. I mean, it doesn't start at a huge price tag, really. Uh, in my opinion, I mean, I buy software for our company, so I know what software costs. Um, so for a small user base, I think it's pretty reasonable. I think you'd have to just reach out to really sales folks and and talk with them. But, you know, for a small footprint, thousand objects, I don't know what that is, maybe a couple thousand dollars a year or something. It's not it's not a huge amount, but don't quote me on that because I'm not a salesperson. <laughs> so um, and that's sales at graphicalnetworks.com or adriana.laura at graphicalnetworks.com. Um, you can email either of those. And uh, actually you should put that in the chat, your email address and sales and all that stuff. We'll, we'll reach out to you guys. Uh, there was a question about how long did it take for the project to make a difference in your team's performance? That would be, I think for you, Jason, like, you know, from you get start using that train, you put data in and then when does it really start kind of paying dividends for you? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, because again, I mentioned the first, the only documentation we had was really what we called a spoken wheel. It, it was just a a logical connection layout. Um, and so, based on that information, I was able to build the links from building to building, 
just with that information. So I got that done rather quickly and just having that uh, laid out really what you what I'd say in real time where it's showing the actual map and how it connects that information alone I found very useful right away. Um, you know, the audit did take a number of weeks and then it took me a number of weeks to put some information in, but I guess it depends on how many people you have working on the project too. Sure. Uh, but immediately, I mean, as soon as the information was in there, it was it was good and usable. And was your boss, uh, I mean, obviously probably had to approve the purchase and all that stuff, but has the the management, upper management, so to speak, been pretty involved and pretty supportive of doing this? Because not, you know, a lot of people, again, you go back to people saying, oh, this is just, uh, you know, a time suck kind of mm -hmm. thing. So they don't necessarily believe and uh, becomes an issue. Yeah, I think it, in the management level, I, I think we've got a lot of support. Um, there's certainly been no complaint in paying that uh, yearly licensing fee or anything like that. So, I mean, they, they see the benefit of having this. Um, every gotcha. time I show them a new little week I make to it or something else I'm adding to it, everyone's pretty excited. So, I mean, we, we really have a lot of people on board supporting this. Yeah, that's great to hear. Um, there was a question around network switches and can you see port level? I did share that on my screen. Uh, mm -hmm. That's in my demo project, not in Jason's because Jason's documenting things a little differently. Obviously, he's going more to the, uh, I think, the LIU level um, yeah. versus down to switch. So I did want to show switches and ports and connectivity and so on. So again, this kind of again speaks to how you guys might do your documentation. It doesn't have to be one way uh, for everybody. So just so you guys know, um, there was a question about a free trial. Yes, you can go to netterrain.us if you want to post that, Adrian. Um, netterrain.us, uh, sign up. It's 14-day trial. We will extend it if you're using it or if you call us and let us know if you stay in touch. We're not like, you only get 14 days, that's it, and that's the end of the world. Uh, no. We'll work with you. We understand, you know, priorities change. Don't always get a chance to touch things and try things out. So, uh, but we'll, that's the URL. Sign up, try it out. I would encourage you also to reach out to us if you do sign up and spend 30 minutes with one of the SEs to help you just get started. Um, yes, there's documentation. Yes, you can drag and drop and kind of start to figure things out. But to get the most out of it, if you really want to try it out, spend 30 minutes or an hour with one of the SE folks and we can help you out and, and walk you through a few things. So, um, so trial, yeah, again, two weeks, but again, we can extend that, especially if you actually are showing that, Hey, I'm doing stuff, uh, product create HTML. How would I embed a map image into the web page? So the map is an outside plant is dynamic. So it integrates with open street maps or Google. Um, you can use your own map. That's what Jason was doing. He had his own map. He just uploaded. It was a JPEG or a PNG or SVG format. So you can do that too. Uh, when you do your own maps, it's not going to have the Latin long though. So you may not be able to do the uh, the uh, coordinate system like you can with open street maps, but it may not matter. So that that's fine. Um, so there's all different ways. And as far as HTML, create HTML, you can do exports of like HTML images of net terrain, the diagram. So if you need to export data, you can do it to PDF and HTML as well. Um, I don't see any more questions. So hey, hey, I think, Jason, I, I did oh, see sorry. one uh, a little ways back. A question popped up from uh, Christopher. Is Indy using fiber based fire alarm monitoring? And if so, is this documented oh, using this platform? Yeah. Uh, that's a big yes. Uh, we absolutely are using uh, fiber for our alarm monitoring and it is documented in this. Uh, the way I do that is when you click on those ports, you know, I, I have a, a section that says, you know, use and user. And so we specify in there that the fire department is using that strand and it's used for the simplex monitoring. Yeah, and you started doing what the uh, phone the phone boxes too, I think, on the map. Yeah, yeah, that was rather new. Uh, you know, our, our telephony group wanted to document the call box, emergency call box locations. We've got 60 plus across campus, so uh, we've started putting that in as well. And we, you know, some of them are IP based, most of them are still analog, but we're trying to transition off of that. Uh, so we have all that information as well. So it's, it's a, a well rounded tool for a number of people in our group. I've seen some other. Um, 
university customers put phone boxes into. I've seen a couple other projects with phone boxes, so that's interesting. Um, no. There was another question about switch. Can switch views be reversed within the rack? Um, yeah, you can put them on the front or the back, assuming that's what you meant. Um, and you can do them. They don't have to be rack mounted either, by the way. Devices can be just sitting in a room or sitting on a floor plan. They don't have to go into a cabinet um, per se. So anyway. Yeah, even that, along the LIU yeah, lines, you know, uh, we don't always have uh, the enclosure in a rack. You know, if it's an older building, you know, we'll, yeah. we'll put something on the wall and just right show it as a wall mounted unit. Right, right, right. Yeah, and we're pretty flexible in allowing you to kind of show and see all that stuff. So uh, stencils come from use Visio stencils. You can use Visio stencils from the standpoint of you can convert visio stencils you do have to convert it to an image format first like a png mm -hmm. or a jpeg so if you have visio that's very easy to do you open up the stencil and save as but we ship with a number of devices in the product already you can add to that yourself um, and you can also if you're a customer request devices from us and we'll create those for you we're pretty good about turning those around usually next yeah. day yeah, very um, quick. <laughs> we do try and we do try because we know you're trying to get work done and we don't want that to be a bottleneck, you know. Oh, I gotta wait for a device for two weeks. No, that's no good. You should be able to do your work. Um, so you can do it yourself, you can have us do it, that kind of stuff as far as providing those devices and types. So yeah. good question. And I found it's very easy to create your own. Yeah, it, it really is. Yeah, in fact, you can even go in the catalog and clone existing ones because mm -hmm. a lot of times a model from one year to another, they look identical anyway. It's usually the insides that are different. So uh, pretty good stuff. Um, anyway, any other, see more questions coming in? Jason, anything else to add? Uh, no, I, I think that kind of covered it all. Thank you very much for your time. Really Absolutely. appreciate it as always. We do. And Thank you so much for being here. We appreciate it. Thanks yeah, to everybody who attended with the great questions. This has really been uh, a lot of fun, this webinar. Usually it's just me rambling on. Uh, so yeah, it's a lot more really fun awesome. when, when other people are talking, especially customers, and uh, when we get a lot of questions from the uh, from the audience. So thanks, everybody, yeah. for your time. Uh, reach out if you have questions, yeah. need help. Thank yeah, you very much. If there were any questions that we didn't cover, we'll definitely email you and, and get those answered as well. Sure. Sure. Thank you, Hannah, for putting together that case study. I know you worked very hard on it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you, Jason. Case study with Jason. So, yeah. yeah. Good stuff. It was great. All right. Bye, everybody. Thanks a lot. Take care. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.